Hey guys, D Mike here. Hope you're ready for another episode of Link's Awakening. I'm ready for a fun time. Last time we accomplished a bunch of stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head, but the end of our episode, we picked up a new friend, this spooky ghost who wanted us to return them to their grave. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in this episode. But first, we're going to do some grave robbing. We're gonna loot this house because they're not gonna stop us. I don't actually condone stealing from the deceased, so don't do that. That is bad news. So we actually have some stuff that we need to accomplish here really quick. One of the parts of this episode that is going to take a little bit of time is it involves... This is so cute, by the way. It involves entering something that was made as a bonus for the DX game and for this one. It wasn't in the original. It was a nice little touch of aesthetic that they added in. Something that you can only accomplish after you've been to the third dungeon and gotten the Pegasus boots. And why is that? Because we need to go and get our bookworm on. So coming into the library, you'll notice that there's a book at the top of these bookshelves that we can only access if we bonk into it. So we're going to go ahead and give that a quick peep. We would love to read. Reading is great, expand your mind. So, this is actually the solution to a puzzle that's in the cemetery that you can't easily do without it. Is it possible to do on your own? Yes. However, you will probably spend more time with the guess and check than anything else, the trial and error of accomplishing that puzzle. I mean, realistically, it's not really possible to know what they're talking about unless you do that. So I would just recommend popping in there. We'll actually be utilizing the Dewey Decimal System one more time before this episode is, not this episode, before this series is complete. Now, if you remember the last time that we were at the Trendy Game, we picked up Spiny. So we're gonna go ahead and Give that to Mama and Papa for their children to look at its behind while they're sleeping. That's a little creepy and a weird spot for that. However, it is what it is. Now, we're going to further along the trendy game in this episode. Now, you're able to do this after the third dungeon. I believe that it gives you a new figurine after each one. Maybe two. I'm not 100% sure on that. But this time, our figurine is the Boo doll. Now, what makes this one tough, once again, is that the Boo doll is headed over to the right. So you're gonna want to try to get the crane going when it's on its way over. It'll usually slip through the grasp of the claws when you do it wrong like that. That was actually for demo purposes, so don't do that exactly. I'm gonna to try to pick up the Boo and the purple and red rupees because we're still trying to save up. So you're gonna wanna give it a little bit more time. Open the claws and hopefully you'll get it wrapped around it. What's nice is that the boo doll is difficult to grab. That's not the nice part. It's round and it's large enough that when the, I guess the fingers of the, of the crane get down around it, it will be pretty close to, to wrapping itself up in it. That is if you're actually skilled at this game and you don't have any trouble trying to do basic tasks like I do. So close. Yes. So the claws are pretty widespread that when you get the boo and in your clutches, you're pretty guaranteed. The difficulty that lies therein of actually making that happen so basically my advice is to not be garbage at this game and then you'll be fine. Like that's just kind of the, the rule of thumb. Uh, I think I might've gotten lucky on this one unless the rupee spills out. Yeah, so I knocked the rupee over because I went a little bit too high up on the crane. So that's pretty good. I'm trying to recoup a little bit of my losses here. We should come out a little bit ahead as long as I successfully grab the red rupee on my first try. Purples are 50, red rupees are 20, so 
That is 70 minus, I think we tried four times. Or five, one, two, three, four, five, five times. So we'll come out ahead 20, which is good. So we get free money, a boo doll. So this episode is all about ghosts and the afterlife. It is pretty cute. I am starting to slightly regret calling the last episode spoopy because this one is definitely spoopier than that one. This would be a series that when done around Halloween, this would be a perfect time to do it around the 31st. Now, oddly enough, this figurine also belongs to Mama and Papa. It does not really roll off the tongue very well. It's on this little pedestal here. So they have a spiky tortoise and a ghost in front of their children's resting places. That is kind of weird. Now, we need to find our way to the grave of this otherworldly creature. Easy way to do that is to get out your ocarina with your Manbo's Mambo. Head over to the pond of Manbo, which he said would open up as a warp destination. That's cool. And it's just the hop, jump, and a skip away, which is very convenient. So this whole area is, I mean, it's only really used for these purposes. I don't think that the game intended for you to do much in this area, and that's why they added this additional bonus content that you'll see in a moment. But here is the final resting place of our ghastly friend. Oh, look at that. Turn that frown upside down. And in return for helping them along, we get another reward. The fairy bottle. This is not the first one. Or sorry, this, this is the first one. This is not the only one that we're going to get, which is nice. It's akin to the other variants of bottles where you can put stuff in it. Pretty great. That was a very good description. So for those of you who are wondering, linguistically, uh, bottles usually have stuff in them and you can put stuff in said bottle. So we'll actually explore that in just a moment. But first, we're gonna get our Rick Grimes on and uh, take care of the walking dead here. Or more of the crawling dead, I guess. I'm kind of waddling. Get another secret seashell. And that's actually all that we're gonna do in there. But what's nice is by heading back towards the... Um, actually, you know, well, I do, I do wanna show it off. So the only place off the top of my head that I can think of that would be effective is to go to the... Prairie. I really enjoy doing that sound. So for those of you wondering, why does he keep making that sound? I'm not gonna stop. Can't stop, won't stop. There is a fairy fountain up here. Excuse you. Which is good that we're going to because we're gonna need it because we're getting a little injured here. I guess we could have headed south from the cemetery, whoops. Now equip your, your uh, fairy bottle and gotcha. Got him. All right. And we'll talk to the fairy, the great fairy, of the superlatives. She's great, but she's not the greatest fairy. So maybe shoot for the stars next time, fairy. And we're healed. That's pretty nice. We actually need to head back into the cemetery for what we're trying to do. I guess we didn't technically go there yet, but we will now. We're going to go in the cemetery. Because we're doing something special in this episode, which I hopefully will make enough time for. I think we're making good time actually right now. I could have just headed down, but warps are fun and uh, get off my back, all right? So having read that book in the library that gave us the hint on what we're supposed to do, there are graves down here in the bottom right of the cemetery that can only be accessed in a certain order. And if you screw this up, you're going to have to, oop, money. You're going to have to pop back into a cave or something to reset it. So first things first, we're gonna go clockwise here. We're gonna go one down. This is two, this is left. Three is going to be up. Four is going to be to the right. 
And five is also going to be up. Oh, sorry. That's not five. That's five. There we go. We did it. You're going to want to make sure that by coming in here, you have a full sack of powder. Or pretty close to. I mean, you'll probably be fine without it, but... And this is the color dungeon. So, welcome to the rainbow. We'll talk to Gar here. And Dion. Get it? Guardian. So you can buy some powder from them, but it's 100 rupees. So you'll probably be able to get away with it. I think you can actually, I'm pretty sure you can actually, I'm pretty, if I could finish my thought, I'm pretty sure you can actually get it in this dungeon. I think it's, yeah, exactly. So if you just wasted 100 rupees on that, you got sucked into a pyramid scheme. Don't, do not fall for that. No Mary Kay for us. And I think actually we'll put the bombs on X for now because I don't want to waste it. So these puzzles are pretty simple. I say that when there's going to be one that comes up later that's actually kind of tough. That I guarantee I will screw up. So there is an owl's beak. That you can use to get a hint. We'll hopefully come back for that. Drop a bomb here on this obviously cracked wall. This is kind of like the Brian Houlihan room from Link to the Past. This is very nice. Get yourself some cash monies. We might have enough by the time this dungeon is done to pick up that special item that I keep teasing. Maybe not. This guy is a jerk, and you can bounce on these tiles a few times each. I believe the green ones can can get you three bounces. You're going to want to be careful, though, because once those are all bounced on, they will expire and you will fall. So that's not good. You can get a free bomb there. I don't need that. Have enough bombs. 59 bombs is good. 69 bombs is nice. So these guys need to be thrown into their respective holes. They are colored red and blue. So hopefully those of you who are colorblind, you're able to still see that. It could be a little tricky. It's red green colorblind, so the, it should be able to stick out enough. At least the blue will be what you're able to pick up. So now that we've got the stone beak, let's pop into that first room real quick and check out what the hint said. I wish that this game would just kind of give it to you like in the first room or like earlier in the dungeon. So, you're trying to make all of the little spinners that are the same color pretty, I don't know, it's just kind of common sense, I suppose. But it would just be nice if they would just give you the owl's beak early if they wanted to give you hints instead of having to track it down. Because, I mean, you don't want to have to pop back in and out, and that's kind of annoying. I guess what you could do in a hypothetical scenario that I wouldn't do is... Once you have, once you've done that, obtained the owl's beak, you can always go ahead and, yeah, ah, oh, I should have let him fall to his death. What you can do is just use the, the Monbo song, and that will pop you back to the beginning of the dungeon, like a warp, save and quit. Small key. Let's go ahead and take a, well, actually, no, I don't have it yet. I got ahead of myself. I was going to say we'll check out the map, but I don't have it. A man just loves maps. I love the map. I am not the map, but I sure do appreciate them. I will say, though, in the age of information and in the age of smartphones and pocket supercomputers, it is really tough to avoid the temptation to always use my GPS whenever I'm going places, just because I like to, even if I know where I'm going, just because I like to see like the time of arrival and what it expects and see if I can beat it, which is kind of whatever, maybe not the smartest idea, but it's fun to live on the wild side a little bit, huh, everybody? So once again, same thing, try to make every tile square. This one's a little bit, oop, this one's a little more involved, not really, pretty simple. We will keep our progression moving. The 
inclusion of this dungeon in the DX game was cool just because I wasn't expecting it. But overall, in general, it's kind of a nothing burger. It's not like I'm not trying to sell it short, but this is the one where I'm just like, oh, I mean, this is cool, I guess. All right. So if you remember these guys from the overworld where the uh, the witch is how it was, they were pretty weak to magic powder and also uh, weak to uh, they're actually they resist my uh, my incompetence because that's a whole lot of it's got a whole lot of that. So you just want to be careful. Stay away from their electric bursts. And they're staying away from my attacks because I am not doing great. As per usual, I w it's nice to be able to get... It's just really cathartic to get like a good spin slash in there, but that's if you're uh, skilled at this game. Unlike me. So... That's a pretty nice... little bonus. Coming in here. Get the boss's key. That's the one thing about the color dungeon in general is it's very short and it doesn't really feel like you're accomplishing a whole lot. I mean, the reward you get is awesome. Don't get me wrong, but in general, I just find that it just seems a little thrown in. But I mean, you know, for the original game, that was probably awesome because that game was so short and you're padding it out a little bit with multiple mini bosses. Uh, excuse you. So you're going to want to be careful here. Dodge the falling rocks. If you jump before they hit the ground, then you won't incur any damage. You'll get stun locked if you don't. So just be careful of that. Ooh, we're doing bad. Oh no. Well, we'll retry. That was our first game over. No worries. We've made it far enough so far. Not having to worry about that. No harm, no foul. I got that fairy, and then I forgot that you actually have to equip it. So, don't be a big old dummy like me. I need to have a little bit more self preservation when I'm playing anyway. It is very easy to just kind of hack and slash when you're playing these games, kind of brute force it a little bit. I need to have a little bit more finesse. Yeah, these 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 mini bosses aren't really tough. I say that as I already died to one. So go ahead and pop that fairy. Pop that good stuff. Yeah, this guy's tearing us up. Second time's the charm. No worries. Easy peasy. You get a fairy in return, so that's pretty nice. Snatch it up. We're actually gonna try to be a little bit care more careful. I almost said carefuler. That's not a word. Uh, can you guys just try to be a little more carefuler? It's uh, it's more better that way. So the amount of people that I've said that phrase to, ironically, and have have upset is quite high. All right. So this puzzle is the one that's a bit of a turd. Same deal as before. I don't know why they put the owl's beak in all of those. It's kind of weird, but I don't quite remember exactly what the puzzle is supposed to be. So bear with me here. This could be one of those situations where it takes me a moment to, I mean, you can honestly brute force this one too, but I don't recommend it. You can just try to smack away until you get where you want to be. This is one of those parts of the game where I don't particularly love these types of puzzles, but you know, as a game that's meant for children, like you should be able to figure this stuff out. 
This is just one of the ones that takes you a second, a hot second. But I mean, what you're doing here is essentially just smacking away until you get the proper setup that you want. We'll get it eventually, folks. Don't worry. There it is. We did it. It only took 700 tries. You bared with me. We made it through together. It's called Diligence. We don't give up here on D Mike's channel. No siree. We are in it to win it. Or in it to accomplish things in a mediocre and painful way. It's one of those things where, you know, had I practiced, I probably would have been better, but I kind of, excuse you, I kind of wanted to take it upon myself not to do too much of that. It doesn't hurt to look stuff up and figure it out, but I wanted this playthrough, excuse you, I wanted this playthrough to be a little more authentic and off the cuff. Like I was, I, I, I've said this like a bajillion million times, but the game was almost not fun for me at all when I played this on the original channel just because of how, like, I don't want to say good I was, but rehearsed I was. So I just got kind of tired of that. So the color dungeon is uh, that, I guess. Nothing special, but we are informed. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. That's the downside of getting the piece of power right now. Is these guys, when they're hit, they travel a bit further. And they don't wind up where they're supposed to be. Now, if I was the type of YouTuber to cut, to intercut, like, movie clips and sound effects and crap into my channel... And I probably would have done a little ode to Happy Gilmore. Go home, ball, or whatever he says. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen that movie, go watch it. It's pretty good. It's in the golden age of Adam Sandler, if that's what you're into. If it wets your comedic whistle. It's not for everybody, that's fine. But anyway. We are almost done here. You can throw a bomb to activate this crystal, but you need to make sure that you're on the other side of it. There's another item that we can maybe get that's a bit long range that would help us to grab that, but we don't have it, so we're going to have to make do. Are you? The hard hit beetle. This is the boss of the color dungeon. He is not terrible, but I am also terrible, so that's actually it. Kind of shocking, to be honest, but I think that's the most difficult dungeon boss in the game, speaking as like all the dungeons like this. I don't know. This is like a pseudo dungeon to me. So this is our reward. We don't get a, an, we don't get an instrument, but we can have the red or the blue mail. Now, funnily enough, in the original DX version of this game, when you chose one, you were stuck with that for the rest of the game. So the red mail makes you stronger, the blue mail makes you more defensive. However, we're not going to take either of them because this game is already pretty easy. You can come back at any time and acquire those at your leisure. If you feel like you need a little bit more of an offensive boost, some more punch, or maybe you're having some trouble with staying alive, so you'll want a defensive boost. So you can pick up one of those if you'd like. It will kind of boost you in the game. It's like getting a piece of power and or a guardian acorn. So next time we're actually gonna head into the fifth dungeon and we're gonna make some progress with the game. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you had a good time. Keep it real. I'll see you next time. Bye.